So some of you guys were asking about arthritis and being the month of September and fitness being our focus, I thought we would spend some time on that today for you. It is Jess, your life and transition coach through your inner vitality. And for some of you guys that don't already know, I'm also a certified personal trainer. So chatting about this and fitness is kind of in a familiar territory for me too. Now, what I'd love to do is talk to you about the four different categories of arthritis. There will be two that we'll spend more time on, but I do want to let you know about these other two as well. The first one is infectious arthritis. So that has to do with um, food poisoning, say salmonella poisoning. You can get and feel the temporary experiences of arthritis. Um, STD, so sexually transmitted diseases, as well as hepatitis C. Those types of infectious uh, diseases can also carry the symptoms of arthritis. Those can also be treated through your practitioner, maybe through antibiotics and other medications and therapies that they're needing um, to help get rid of all of that and those symptoms as well. So that could be a temporary component for you. The other one is metabolic arthritis. And that one would have to do more with say your uric acid as well as um, food intolerances and allergies and can cause gout. Now with that one there, I'm actually going to recommend last month's video with Dr. Nicole Panet Panetier, the naturopathic doctor on the elimination diet and helping you figure out and determine what your food intolerances are. So that would be a really great one for you guys to check. I will I tag that onto this video for you guys too through the YouTube. Um, but what I'd love to do is spend more of the meat and potato time on the next two categories. The next one is a degenerative arthritis. Oh, I always screw that word up. Degenerative arthritis. We got it. There we go. And one of the most common ones of arthritis is in this category, and that's the osteoarthritis. So that's where, you know, that lubrication, the cushions between the joints start to dissipate. And that's where you start to get that bone on bone, that grinding happening, it causes swelling, pain, um, you know, a lot of irritation in that area, those areas where you experience that. Now that can be brought on by a whole slew of things. Family history, how has your weight gain been? Um, it could be a prior, um, prior injuries that you have, like torn ACL, you hear that a lot, or rotator cuff, stuff like that. So that's where your osteoarthritis does come into play. Then you also have the inflammatory arthritis, and that has to do, or the category in that one you'll hear a lot of, is the rheumatoid arthritis. <clears throat> now, the Arthritis Foundation states that, based on the research there, that it can be a lot of genetics and your environment that do affect the rheumatoid arthritis. So an example of the environment could be if you're a smoker or you live with a smoker, that can also affect your joints and ligaments. And so that's where um, your body's response to inflammation isn't the best and it's actually attacking your joints and uh, seeing that as a, an intruder or something that is not right in those areas and causing that additional inflammation in those joints. So those two different areas I wanted to spend a bit of time on today because working out is super important but you also want to make sure that what you're doing is helping you and not hindering you. So I wanted to split up different areas and categories of your fitness regime and some things that you could be doing if you do experience any of these types of symptoms um, through your arthritis that you may have. Pardon me. So cardio. So a couple areas of that you could work with cardio would be cycling, walking, and swimming. So swimming, especially when you have the water where it's maybe from your shoulders down, um, where it can reduce your weight and help with the impact, but also allow for you to get some even some nice resistance training within the water as well. You can do water weights, um, aquatics classes, lane swimming, and it's very little pressure on the joints and also some really great of your own body weight that you're using too. 
Now, when it comes to flexibility, now range of motion is going to be very important when it comes to you and your world of exercising if you do have arthritis or the onsets of it. Now, when it comes to flexibility, there's a couple areas that I'd recommend. We've got yoga and we also have Tai Chi. Um, those two areas, you have your range of motion, so it's gentle movements and it helps to open up those joints in a gentle way and allow those synovial fluids to start getting in there that you do have available to help lubricate the joints naturally. Now, the other is strength training. So this is where I've got a couple of my own little tools that I have for my house that my daughter and I use. And so when it comes to your resistance training, and that has to do with not cardio, but like strength. So, you know, light weights are really great things. So even if you have some soup cans at the house, you have also resistance bands or resistance tubes. These are super inexpensive. In fact, you could probably get them at the dollar store a lot of the times now. Um, and this resistance training really can help with your exercises as well. And then you also have like when talking about light weights, I have weighted medicine balls. So those ones there, some of them you can get very tiny to some as simple as at the dollar store or, you know, your local hardware store or fitness store of any course that you can get something like this. These things are very inexpensive, can be stored pretty much anywhere and used anywhere within your house. Now, when it comes to range of motion exercises, I am going to attach a really useful document that is from the Canadian uh, Arthritis Society. And these have 10 different exercises that you can do throughout the day to help with your mobility, to you know keep movement in place and that flexibility in, in moving with your body. So it also gives some disclaimers if you've had some hip replacements or knee replacements. It's a really nice one page tool that's very easy for you guys to follow. So that is arthritis for now. What I would recommend is movement is key. Once I had a doctor prescribe that someone not use their doc, their membership, their gym membership because they had arthritis and they recommended bed rest. To this day, I still am a huge advocate of movement for your body. The worst thing you can do is stay in bed and not move. So in those days when you're not feeling great and you cannot keep that momentum going or your body is just feeling so stiff and against you and you're feeling so much older than what you really are, my biggest recommendation is just get out and move. Go for a walk, maybe grab a resistance band or medicine ball and move gently and allow your body to feel that movement. I know maybe it's cliche, but um, arthritis can just be something that is coming to us because we're getting older these days, but that also means that we need to be taking care of our body, taking care of ourselves. So. It is Jess, your life and transition coach through your inner vitality. And let me know if the attachment and all of these great things are working for you. And if you have any other questions, if I don't know them, I promise you, I will seek some of those medical professionals in my network to get that support as well. And if you think doing something like this on your own right now is just way too daunting or too much, my recommendation is reach out. Talk to your general practitioner, naturopathic doctor, go to your physiotherapist and maybe get a personal trainer to help you with your workouts, to keep you motivated, keep you grounded, but also keep you moving and your body feeling good. So we'll leave you with that for now. I hope you have a great month. We'll chat soon.